Are you looking to bring more detail or more pop to your image? Then you're in the right place. Stay tuned and you'll learn how to bring out the personality of your image. Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And today we're gonna learn how to enhance your images by bringing out that extra detail that you're missing. And we're gonna do that using a tool within PixInsight called Local Histogram Equalization. And that tool adjusts everything from the smallest of structures all the way to the largest of structures. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Also, check out my Unlocking the Universe video, as that's a video index to all of my PixInsight tutorials. And I'm also going to have links to them in the description of this video as well. So let's head on over and learn how to use local histogram equalization. To find local histogram equalization, what you're going to do is go to Process, All Processes, and Local Histogram Equalization. And this is what the box looks like. As you can see, there's a few things to adjust here. And really, the only things, there's only two areas that I adjust. One is kernel radius, and the other is amount. I leave everything else at default. Now, kernel radius is going to be um, the basically the structures that you're adjusting. The smaller the number or the more left the slider is, the smaller the structures. On the flip side, the larger the number or the more right the slider is, the bigger the structures. Amount is how much the kernel radius is going to affect your image. Now, I'm going to be demonstrating this using M16 Eagle Nebula. And before we get started, what I'm gonna do is create a clone of the image so we can compare before and after. Now, let's go ahead and open up a preview. And what you're gonna see immediately is what this is doing to this image. Let me move this clone out of the way. Now, you can see that is a lot of adjustment. Here's before, here's after. What I like to do is um, leave amount at one so I can see exactly what's going on over here. Now, if you take the kernel radius slider and you move it left, you can see the difference in how it adjusts on the flip side all the way right. You can see how that adjusts. Now I leave it at one because it amplifies what it's gonna be doing and then I move the slider around and try to find um, exactly what it's gonna be doing, the types of structures that it's going to be um, working with and then I will dial in the amount once I find good areas that I want to adjust. Now, in uh, my previous video in the PixInsight series, uh, I was talking about range selection and how to create a mask. This is one of those areas that a mask can be helpful in. So remember what this looks like over here. Let's hop out. Now, I already have a mask created right over here, and I already have it applied. As you can see, this is grayed out, so the mask is not currently active. If I hit Control Shift M, it turns brown, and now it is active. Now let's bring this up, and you can immediately see the difference in how uh, much that's affecting. Let's hop out of here. Let's unapply the mask and open this up again. You can see the massive difference here. This comes into taste and this comes into how busy the object is that you're working with. If you have a lot of areas in here, it might be a good idea to apply a mask to reduce how, um, how much local histogram equalization is actually uh, affecting your image. 
So again, this is one of those things where you play with it both ways. You use local histogram equalization with and without a mask, and what do you like better? There's really no wrong or right answer in this. It's all about taste and making your vision become reality. So let's work this without the mask, and um, let's see what we can get. Now, my general rule of thumb and what I found works best with uh, the data that I have is a kernel radius of 20, 80, and 256. No um, rhyme or reason for those numbers, just what I found over time that works best with my data. Um, when I have a new object or target that I imaged, I will go ahead and play with the, uh, the sliders here and just kind of browse and see what looks best and what I like to be adjusted. So let's go ahead, just uh, for sake of example here, let's start with 20. And let's dial this back. And the preview button, if you hit it and you see real-time preview, that is before. And then you see real-time preview with your process uh, on it, that is uh, what you're actually adjusting. So we got before and after. Before and after. Now, a little word of caution here. Uh, it can get very exciting uh, to do this and bring out those details. Keep in mind, it can sometimes be overdone. This right here, just like saturation, less is more, right? You can easily overdo it and really make your image look synthetic and um, overly processed. And if, if that's your taste, that is perfectly fine. This is your image, um, but it can be overdone. So, you know, just you know, be careful, subtle little adjustments at a time. Um, I accidentally hit apply on that. So let's go before after. Now, I don't know if your screen is able to pick this up, but right around in this area over here, uh, you can see where it's actually making its adjustments. Let's bring this up just a little bit more, just a hair more. Here's before and after. Before and after. Let's go ahead and accept this. You can either hit apply or close out of the preview, grab the triangle and drag it over. So let's reopen this preview and let's go to 80. Let's see what this does. Here's before and after. Before and after. Bring this down just a little bit. Now, not using a mask is going to affect your entire image. Using a mask can centralize it in certain areas depending on how you have your mask set up. So keep that in mind too. Do you wanna work on just specific areas of your image or do you wanna work on the entire image? What I'm looking for here is just uh, subtleties of the change and do I like exactly what I'm seeing? Is it getting overdone? I think that might be a little bit overdone, so I'm gonna dial that back just a hair. And let's go ahead and accept that. Again, you can either close out of the preview and drag the triangle over or just hit apply. Let's go to 256. Here's before and here's after. Before and after. Before and after. I kind of like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply. Now let's hop out of here Let's hop out of local histogram equalization, and here is our before on the 
right and our after on the left. And you can see that some more of the detail is brought out right in this area, right? You get a little bit more up in this region over here. And even in the structures over here, we have some more coming out. And that's all that it takes to use local histogram equalization. So I hope you found that useful. If you did, do me a favor, that channel icon that just popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Throw a comment in the comment section. Did you learn anything new? Are you excited to use this? And if you are using this, uh, what issues are you running into? Or do you have anything uh, to throw in or add? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.